Hi everyone, in this lesson I want to talk about some uh, factoring of special products. Here we have some perfect squares and there's no special uh, trick to factoring perfect squares other than to just factor it like you normally would as two binomials with the addition that you might happen to notice that that if the first term and the last term are both squares then it might work out that that uh, it ends up to be a perfect square. So I factor and I notice that that x and x will give me x squared and the square root of 16 is 4 and 4 and 4 here does give me an 8 in the middle. I need both of these to be minus. Um, so double check everything. Negative 4x, negative 4x is negative 8x plus 16. And then I can just do a little extra step here. Just write it as a as a perfect square. Okay. Here's another example. You just notice right away that that the uh, first term and last term are perfect squares. If you happen to notice that, then when you go to factor it as you normally would, uh, just try 7p and 7p, the square root, 6q and 6q, the square root of the 36q squared. And if this is plus and these are uh, minus, they both have to be minus down here. So I've got a negative 42 and a negative 42. Sure enough, that makes the middle term there, negative 84pq. Now you have to be careful because there are some times in uh, algebra when when it won't factor. It may look like it's a perfect square, but it's not. So always double check that inner and outer that it adds to give you the middle term. And then if it does, then go ahead and write it as the perfect square that it is. Now the one time where uh, you would want to be aware of how to factor a perfect square is when you actually know that it is a perfect square. There is a time coming in your algebra when you will know that something is a perfect square. And if you know it's a perfect square, even though there's like in these two examples fractions, you know that it has to factor a certain way. Right? You know it has to be x and x to get x squared. And you know if it's a perfect square, it has to be 5 halves and 5 halves to get the 25 fourths. And you know if this is minus, that these two have to be minus. And when you double check it, you see, sure enough, you'd get a negative 5 halves or negative 2 and a half x here, and another negative 2 and a half x here that does make negative 5 x there. And so you know that you have x minus 5 halves squared. Okay? Same thing over here. If I know for a fact that it's a perfect square, and I know that these signs are both plus, I know that has to be plus there. I know it has to be x here, because I square x to get x squared, and I would know that it has to be 3 7 here, so that when I square the 3 7 I get the 9 49s. Okay? I can double check. Remember, we have a special product, a special way of squaring binomials. I square the first term, and then the middle term is always this term times this term, right? That'd be 3 7 x doubled. I have to double it, and sure enough, that does give me the 6 7 x in the middle. And then I square the 3 7 and I get 9 49 Okay, here's another special product, or a factorization of a special product that we now call the difference of squares. So, <clears throat> As always, factor out anything that's in common, in this case a 6. And if you have the difference of squares, uh, there's no middle term. That's the key here, and that it is a subtraction. If I'm going to factor that as two binomials and not get a middle term, then it has to be the, the, uh, the special product where you have the sum and difference of terms. I have to have one of them be plus and one of them be minus, so that when I FOIL it out, the negative xy in this case cancels the positive xy so that you don't have a middle term, and then your negative y squared here. Okay? Here's another example. Notice there is a common factor here of 25a that I can bring out. That leaves me b to the fourth minus z to the fourth and this is a perfect square. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor that as b squared minus z squared. 
times b squared plus z squared. Okay, that's the sum uh, difference of terms. Here's the sum of terms, and here's the difference of those terms, b squared and z squared. Now, notice in this case, I have another difference of squares, but I can factor that a little bit further. b minus z times b plus z. And here I have the sum of squares. Now, the sum of squares is not factorable. This one here you can't factor any further. You just have to leave that one as it is. Okay? So that would be my answer on this one. Here's another example. If I have 1 16th minus y squared, I have something squared here minus something squared here. So I can factor that as the square root of 1 16th. Well, that's just 1 4th minus y and then the same thing 1 4th plus y. And you do this so often, this occurs so frequently in uh, algebra, <clears throat> you want to get very good at factoring these uh, differences of squares as the sum and the difference of the, of the terms, and those terms end up being the square roots of those numbers there. Okay? Now this is a special example of what we've just been doing. And the significance of this example is that you have a, a quantity p plus q, and, and when students first see this, their eye tends to see two things. It sees the two terms. It sees a p and a q, and your first inclination is to probably want to multiply that out. But, but we're factoring, not multiplying out. And what you want to do is you want to think of that p plus q not as two things, but as a single quantity. I like to call that Bob, just as a way, a mnemonic in my mind, of thinking of a single quantity instead of two quantities, p and q. Now, if I had Bob squared minus 25, and I said factor that, most of you wouldn't have any problem saying, well, that's just Bob minus 5 times Bob plus 5. Okay? And that's exactly what we want to do here. I want to factor this, and I just know that Bob is just p plus q. So I'm going to get p plus q minus 5 and p plus q plus 5. So I like to use a nested parenthesis like this just to emphasize that I have a single quantity here. And that may help you to identify it as well. Okay? And it's okay if you leave those extra parentheses in, or if you want, it's okay to also just write it as p plus q minus 5 times p plus q plus 5. Okay? Either one of those are all right. I actually prefer the first one just because it helps you to, to keep in mind the pattern there. Okay. Now here's a, some other examples. Um, that sort of relate to what we just did. Uh, here I have four terms, and typically if there's four terms, we would factor by grouping. And usually when we factor by grouping, we group like the first two and the last two together. But in this case, what you notice is that these first three are, there's that certain symmetry about them, and those three are actually a perfect square. So if I group those first three together, what I would get would be an A minus 4 times a minus 4, it's a perfect square, minus b squared. So this is a minus 4 squared minus b squared. And then this is the same sort of situation we have up here. I've got, I've got something squared. I've got a bob squared minus a b squared. And so that's going to be equal to like bob minus b times bob plus b. Or in this case, a minus 4 minus b times a minus 4 plus b. All right? So again, I've got, I've got bob minus b and bob plus b, and that would be my, my answer. And I would just leave it like that. Again, if you want to get rid of the parentheses, you can. Just write it as a minus 4 minus b and a minus 4 plus b. We have a similar situation on this problem. The difference, though, is that it's the last one, the last three that you'd have to group together. And notice that in this case, I'd have to first factor a minus sign out of those. And then I see this, this symmetry of a perfect square here. That would be x minus y 
times x minus y and that's a perfect x minus y squared alright so now I've got 9 minus Bob squared so that's gonna factor as 3 minus Bob times 3 my uh, plus Bob okay now in this case if I want to get rid of the parentheses here I have to distribute the minus to this binomial so I can either leave it like this or I could write that as 3 minus x plus y times 3 plus x minus y. Okay?